my turn. Have you ever seen a ghost? When the camera's on, it's all a big bit of fun. On the big red shutter club. On the big red shutter club. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I always get sick right before I film these. Because yeah. I film them in big chunks. Then my mother's always like, I get always sick. Well, my mom's not scouts. But <laughs> anyways, we'll, we'll deal with the sniffles. I've so, got the sniffles anyway. Don't worry about it. So, hello and welcome back to the Red Shutter Club. Today, I'm here with Jono. Jono. Of Austerity Dogs. Ah, uh, yeah. You all Hi. right? He's ready with his Jimmy's glass. R.I.P. Jimmy's. Oh, yeah. Rip. <laughs> that was like shocking news. Yeah, what our like second or third gig was there, and we were supporting a French band called Monitors, and we were first on. No one turned up, so I just started rambling, and it was that like bizarre. People just like walking past, like what the fuck's going on? Yeah. So like we filled it out then, <laughs> just people just watching me melt down. We love it. We love it. Everyone loves a good meltdown. Yeah. Um. But so tell us a bit about yourself. A bit about Austerity Dogs. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm John Owen from Austerity Dogs. Uh, we're a two-piece spoken word laptop punk band. So I, I started as a comedian back in, like, 2015. Uh, Lachlan, the other lads who unfortunately can't be here, he's a producer for rappers, and we lived together. So when lockdown hit in 2020, I lost all my gigs in comedy. Yeah. He couldn't get any clients in to record so we were bored and i just started writing poems and putting just just getting loops together started like the streets and then we realized like we like punk can we make something that sounds like that and we've ended up sort of transgression transgressing and evolving into this yeah like yeah spoken word laptop punk idols like band we got mosh pits going over into class that's pretty cool definitely a, a a first for red shutter club a lot of we get like a lot of folk artists a lot yeah. of americana it's a lot of people playing the same sort of stuff but a spoken word laptop punk band it's niche. very intriguing very niche. niche very niche um so that came to be through lockdown um i almost want to ask like how it's received because it is such a niche thing yeah so, I think we were lucky that I'd done comedy for years, so I'm all right on stage. Yeah. I can do crowd work and stuff, so we knew it was nice. There a couple of bands similar, Bob Villain, similar. Um, Sleaford Mods were named after Sleaford Mods' second album. Um, but there's nothing really up here. So, our first gig, we were supporting Scott Levine in a few yards. Yeah. And no one in there really got it, but by the end... Yeah, they figured it out. Uh-huh. And we just started slowly go gigging more, getting more confident with the music. And then now we have got a decent fan base. We did a gig in London recently. Um, and that was sold out. We were supporting Golds Luck and Chain. We were main support. And we had, it was filled to 200 and half of them in there were yeah. singing our words back to us. Yeah. Which was mad because it's like the police opposite end of the country. I didn't realise our music had went that far. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. How do you think you managed to build a fan base like that? Perseverance, you know. Um, so it's all the music's new to me, not new to Lachlan, but Lachlan had never, he's never been on like the promoting side of it. So I just treated it like I would, like a comedy character. And I don't like, so we, we have a quick turnaround with music so we can keep releasing tracks so we can make them pretty quick. But that we were worried about that getting boring, so I just started filling like our Instagram and Facebook with just memes, just yeah. shit post. Yeah. And we don't, we were gonna do like the cringy side, like set up a TikTok and stuff and follow trends, but we just thought keep shit posting and that they get re reshared loads of times, even if it's not about us. We just make yeah shit post. Yeah. 
and that's what bigger than the music well it's it's really interesting because for this i really had to do a lot of uh, work into like researching the instagram algorithm and all yeah. that and i think you're one of the only people who would when, when you got here you were like oh yeah for the for the time it's been out it's got a lot of this a lot of viewership a lot of this a lot of that yeah especially organic yeah because it's yeah you know, when you said march and I, th- I think some people whenever people look at follower counts and engagement counts do you compare to things that are already established? Yeah. And even yourself, if it's your page, you are automatically going to do that. Yeah. And I've I've worked in marketing for years, yeah. so I know, I know my way around the engagements and seeing the just organic response. That's a massive start. Most people don't get that. Yeah. And it's, I think it's just because like when people make projects, when it really comes from the heart, you can tell. And then that's when you persevere and that's when they glows up do you know what i mean doesn't grow it glows up yeah we love like a wholesome marketing message i find that most musicians hate talking about like the business side of things like i'll I'll watch people make like very strategic marketing decisions or branding decisions but then if i ask them like oh well how do you market yourself how do you brand yourself ah don't fucking do that yeah i think though it's that's what i do in my day job anyway i've worked i've worked in marketing since 2015 yeah so it's that just bleeds into like the comedy. So when I was doing comedy, I some of the gigs I was doing is because I was marketing myself, and it's a horrible way to look at it sometimes because you're sort of separating the soul from the art. But once you can figure out how to do it, you can still keep a bit of yourself involved in it. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? There's a very fake way to do it. Yeah. And then there's a very real way to do it. Yeah. You know, that's why I think my band is so hesitant to make material like that because it can come across so fake. But you just have to find the things. You don't just do something, say, on TikTok because, oh, the sound's going viral. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you post something that fits. Exactly. The if, you, if you follow a trend that's not popular anymore, but you find it funny, people will enjoy that content because yeah. they can tell you find it funny. Yeah. And that's most viral videos go viral because of the genuine moments in them. Yeah. So, do you have any sort of gigs coming up? Yeah. So, um, we're playing Wolf James in Leeds, 10th of November. Um, we're sporting Sleep Outside, uh, pop punk bands, Cardiff, we're emo punk. Uh, we're on with the Bank of Thunder and the Giants. And there's another band getting announced, but I, don't, I, can't, I haven't been told the name yet. After that, um, look at it gigging in. So is it Soto? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking, we've done there recently. Um, they're looking at getting us on around December, and then uh, Vinyl House. But look at a February, January or February. I don't, that'll either be Jack and Andrew or Jimmy's, whichever. Oh, nice. to put us on, yeah. Can I ask you questions? If you want to. So you ask me a question. I'll ask you a question. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna ask, what is your sort of? You said you have a very quick turnaround for yeah. the for the stuff you put out. What does that process look like? Sounds. So, I'll write a poem. Um. So what we do is we 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 have a EP and we have a theme. So yeah. the EP that we did first called self entitled. That was just to get something out there. The second EP called the Void. It's about the detachments of the working class and stuff and we had the theme i write poems and we just mess with beats and we just keep throwing shit at walls till it sticks yeah but we'll just sit there for a few hours in the studio college just us two we don't yeah. have to rely on other people and like get them to do something we can just keep playing with these loops yeah so we can make a song ready to put on like this though kid yeah in a day um doesn't mean they're good but but they're there. Yeah, that's the thing. We just keep putting them out there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. My turn. Have you ever seen a ghost? Have I ever seen a ghost? Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, I was pretty sure this apartment was haunted when I first moved in. Yeah. But then I realized it's probably just because this building is older than the country that I'm from. <laughs> 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 yeah. Have you ever seen a ghost? I don't know. I mean, I feel half dead at the minute, so you yeah, can count that I as half point. I might be now. <laughs> nah, I I seen something. There's a church where I'm I'm from a town on the outskirts of Liverpool called yeah. Kirby, and there's a church called St Chad's, and it was built when the Vikings settled there originally, and it's just got an eerie vibe about it. And I used to walk when I was in school from my mate's house to the other side of Kirby to mine, 
and I can knock half an hour off the journey by walking through the church in the graveyard. Yeah. Never bothered me, ever. And one night, I was on the phone to my mate. And I, I only phoned him. I wasn't scared of seeing a monster. I was scared like getting stabbed or something. And <laughs> it was Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he says to me, watch that noise. I can't hear nothing. And he says, I like twig snapping. My phone goes from 80% battery to 20%. And I'm looking at it. And something told me to like turn around. Yeah. And I just seen what looked like a shadow stood up though. And my body just said, like, run. It's not right. I got proper fights. I've never had that before. I sprinted, and I felt like I was dreaming. Like, felt heavy. I was that scared. Oh, my Turn God. around, it's gone. And it probably was a baggage. But at night, and your battery dies like that, it could be a monster. It could be. It yeah. could be. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Follow-up question. Have you ever seen any of the, like, ghost hunting shows? Yeah, I love them. My favourite thing, my favourite thing. Zach Baggins and that. Yeah. Ghost is Go in the basement, Aaron. Yeah. It already senses your fear. Why do I have to go in the basement? Exactly. Just grown men arguing about who has to go in the basement. I like the spirit boxes because that is the biggest pile of <laughs> shit I've ever <laughs> seen. Because, like, they go, oh, they said something. Just, uh, 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 and every now and then it goes, hi. <laughs> and they always go, it's, they always go, they'll play it back and go, see, it's the same voice. It's not. Yeah. It never has been, but they try and gaslight me into thinking it is, and I believe it is by the end of it. How many? How many seasons? How many seasons has it been going? Have they found a ghost? No, nah. they have not. That's the thing. If they did find a ghost, it wouldn't be an episode. It would be a fucking special. It would. We'd know from the, the twenty-eight paper. seasons. Nah, how many episodes is that though? As well. Jesus. Uh, that's that. Isn't that like twenty-four episodes or something? 225 episodes and so that, multiple specials. Zach Baggins. Zach Baggins needs the factory reset. Zach his soul, Baggins you know. should be our next guest. Yeah. He's Every, got like a fun house in his, you know, just spooky shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mad. I couldn't live there. I'd want to watch him live there because I think it'd be funny. Yeah. He'd be scared to go in his own basement. Everybody tag Zach Baggins yeah. in the comment section. Hashtag Zach. Hashtag Zach. Put in the comments, are you team Zach or Aaron? Who should go in the basement? <laughs> sit in the chair, Aaron. No. Yeah. No. I demand you to sit Well, no. That is not going to happen. Just do it. No. Trap. Oh, my God, dude. You know, this show started to, to be work on my master's thesis. And let me tell you, it's been very helpful towards yeah. it. <laughs> This is like the best plot twist if you were still working on it as well. If like you based your masters on this specific episode, yeah, on Zach like oh, you're like per, you're like per episode is based it on it. Then all of a sudden, when they're grading it, like why the fuck is he talking about ghosts now? <laughs> and it's like yeah, <laughs> oh god, because the music industry is full of ghouls. <laughs> yeah, yes. Lovely. Are you gonna name names? Absolutely not. Shit, but I'm was- also one of them. <laughs> Don't, I'm gonna cancel you you know I can't wait we're gonna watch you get cancelled in real time oh probably I will do it don't tempt me <laughs> oh god so there's two questions that we're asking everybody and this is what could get you cancelled now oh go on uh, this is gonna be controversial you know cause I'm I'm, I'm bisexual so I love controversy <laughs> I am going to give you the worst answer. I can't help it. Hit me. Okay. So first question. What's a song from the Liverpool music scene by a Liverpool artist that you wish you wrote? Anything by Echo and the Bunnymen. Killing Moon, preferably. Fair. Well, that wasn't a very controversial response. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can ask, you can't really, I don't think you could, that question could be, uh, any answer could be controversial. I, I love that song, The Killer Moon, by right? Echoing the Bunny Men. And I, you know, every time I try and write a poem, and I try to be, like, dark and broody, like Echoing the Bunny Men, I just sound gay. I'm allowed to say it. Yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, yeah, I can't do it. And it's something, you know, like, as an artist, you'd look at inspirations and a part of you wants to mimic it. Yeah. No matter what, you can paint it as whatever colour. You were trying to mimic that person. And every effort I've tried to make, I'll be happy the day I can do something 
that I listened to him, like, I've actually did a decent job at impersonating them. Yeah. Second question. Liverpool music scene. Everyone goes head to head, throwing bows in the octagon. A massive scrap. Who's coming out? Me. I'll scratch them all. You heard it here, folks. There's a few, though, because I've... I'm not going to name names. I know I said I like controversy. I'm not going to name names. So, but they'll watch it and they'll know who I'm talking about. So, we we don't... We're friends with a few people in the scene. But we're not in the scene. Yeah. Because we don't know how to be. Oh. And we have tried. And like, there's a few bands that run nights. And we're like, oh, um, we're not asking for much. We're asking for like a little shitty open mic spot. And... They just snarl us and they'll say, Yeah, yeah, short and then drop us and then find out like they just replace us with someone. We don't get why. Well, open mic so you could usually just show up. Exactly, but it, it's coupled and we don't really have time. You're the other ones where they just book as you say open mic. Oh, yeah, yeah. The other ones who just book. Um Yeah, we just get swerved and a couple of them there's one band that I'm from my council estate in Kirby and I don't sound like, I'm very well educated sometimes. And this person eats avocado on toast, you know what I mean? Like, middle class as anything. Yeah. And I didn't kick off, but I was like, why did he just swerve us? What's the problem? And I, I got, a, like, a level of fear out of them. And they haven't spoke to us since. And I genuinely think, like, there was a bit of classism involved. And I won't In name England? Because- I won't name it, but like they will know. I like you'll know they know because they're gonna comment. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I don't quite know what it is. I struggle quite a bit to get gigs. Yeah. And I I assume that it's my inability to sell myself. But some of my American friends are like, "Nah, man, it's because I'm American. They don't like me because I'm American." You know what? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if because yeah. a lot of it is. So, going back to it with us and we're getting swerved and replaced, it's always by not being horrible, but people that are better looking, people that are younger, people that are in, the, the, you know, they fit the click. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. Yeah. It's a popularity contest and these people that will run nights, they sort of lose that image that they had at the beginning of putting a night on with genuine music. They just want to look cool. Yeah. And that's the worst thing that can happen to music. The best people in music are the outcasts. Exactly. Do they not realise that? The best creatives are the outcasts. They create because they've got nothing else and it's the most purest art. If you look like Jim Morrison, get in the bin. I don't care. There's only one of them. I told you I'm controversial. <laughs> Jim Morrison, eat your heart out. <laughs> Woo! Okay. It's getting warm in I here. Know. Oh, I, I can ask a question though. Go ahead. Yeah. What scares you more? Wasps. Or vampires. Um, that's I'm only a, asking because it's spooky season. It's because it's spooky season. Yeah. Uh, I mean those those killer killer wasps that were coming out during COVID. Those are pretty horrifying. Speaking of bugs, that's a fly. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about that. It's fine. It's fine. We'll edit that out. <laughs> this is coming from the corpse. <laughs> <You've got laughs> the plot twist: <laughs> It's a of, vampire. Of wasp. the last name that was on the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right. Well. I think with that, are we going to try a couch concert? Yeah. Okay. We're going to see what happens. Yeah. It takes a lot less time to ponder and debate the idea that we're not all running a machine, bigger than what we put in. Only kidding about those that need us when the hashtag is trending. He's still gonna take the knee when the tender's over. We capitalist pigs, people are killing themselves for being overweight. Yet you spew your anti union rhetoric and hide all your money in Panama. What's all that about? What is that all about? Meanwhile, in the sunny utopia that we call the Western world, there is systematic racism, elitist pedophilia, corruption, secret its way to the very core. And what you'll tell me is to talk to my MP and ask them, what is this all about? Dear Mr. Unseen MP, I really wish that you was Dennis Skinner, but well, I suppose that means the real question. Is this 
What is this all about? 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 Is this all about? You are currently third place in the telephone queue. Did you know that you can reach us online through filling out the form so we can monetize your personal information and sell it on to the highest bidder? Or just make sure that you stay in your lane. Don't question your unelected house of lords. Just stay in your lane. What is it all about? What is it all about? There's two billionaires, Jeff Bezos is a paedophile, Elon Musk is a fucking nonce, what is this all about, oh yeah, and that's all I've got, <laughs> yeah, punch, Well, that was something. <laughs> um, so, is there anything that you'd like to plug before we go? Yeah, so, um, uh, last EP, Lobster.exe, is out on CD and cassettes on Bandcamp uh, through Init Records. We've got a few gigs coming up. Leeds, round Liverpool, um, and we have a single coming out. We don't know what yet from our next EP. Again, quick turnaround. Our next EP is called Heavy That. We are looking to start pre-orders for that as well because the other ones have went really fast. So we'll be posting a pre-order link soon and hopefully drop the first track from that. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you so much for tuning in. What is this all about? Oh yeah. Well, that's all I've got. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Red Shutter Club. I have to reach behind me now. Uh, I am here today with everybody's favorite Illinois boy, child of the corn, soy boy, <laughs> Chris. Hey. Hi. Child of the corn. I think you've called me that since like day one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would not pass up that opportunity. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Chris is actually over in Illinois at, at the minute. Yeah. So, yeah. how on God's earth do we know each other? <laughs> <laughs> um, how did we? I think it was just because I was over there playing and somebody's like, oh, Shannon's American too, you know. Like, Actually, I know I, the answer. I'm pretty sure that's how that happened. You, you know what it was actually at first because when I first met you, you had about seven feet of hair, um, yeah. and me and me and female Canadian Jamie were like talking about your hair, and she just like leaned over to me and she goes, "If you hold them down, I'll cut it off." Oh my god! So then I was like okay jamie and then i think <laughs> like i heard you were american and i'm like hey me too so it was it was definitely monday club i remember that oh yeah yeah it was yeah and well and that's funny because jamie and, and jason were like some of the first people that i met like one of the first mm -hmm. times i was just there alone so mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I didn't didn't know that thanks jamie god <laughs> I cut my hair I, I, well it I, seems I, like I, she I succeeded I, I ended up yeah yeah i know yeah it's a lot shorter well it's it's getting a bit long again now but i cut it i cut it like you know to less than shoulder length uh, right before I came back there in, I don't know November or something so. yeah so she mm -hmm. got her way in the end <laughs> okay all right so she did she did sorry I think there's a bit of a delay we're trying this is the first time we've yeah. ever recorded Red, Red Shutter Club oh, over a zoom call so all experimental Chris agreed to be my guinea pig all right, so uh, I guess let's just let's just get started. Tell us a bit about you, a bit about your music, and like just what you're sure. doing, man. Sure. Um, about me, I don't know. Uh, well, you see, I'm 33. Um, no, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, I basically just been playing music my whole life, uh, and just started really taking writing seriously um, a few years ago. And I'd been in several bands and all that, and then one day just decided. 
hey, I'd like to be in control of all this instead of having it be democratic, which maybe is a flaw, I don't know. Uh, so I was just like, I'll go solo, and so I did, and uh, recorded like my first EP, and it wasn't long after that that I started coming over to the UK to play, um, and which happened by complete accident. I was just over there to visit and see Suede live a few times, and ended up in Liverpool on a Monday, in like November 21, and uh, this guy that I knew in St. Louis um, just messaged me and was like, hey, I've played over there before, let me, I'll message my friends, and, uh, and they'll come hang out with you and stuff like that. And so what they ended up doing was get me out to the Cavern pub because I was just over at the club. And, uh, and then, yeah, the, I get over there and I was, I was like half pissed already, you know, anyway, because it's like 10 or 11. And they're like, <laughs> oh, get up on stage and play. And I was like, no, nah, I don't need to be doing that right now. You know, I'm like, I'll just do it anyway. And then Ian comes around, you know, running it. And he's like, oh, I hear you're a musician. You need to get up there and play, play your own songs. And I was just like, well, I mean, if Ian Pross is saying it, then yeah, I should probably do that, you know, so I did. And, uh, and then, yeah, that's how, so we mentioned meeting uh, Jamie and Jason. That's actually where I met them and, like, John Witherspoon, Johnny Oates, um, you know, just a handful of different people. And they just basically said, hey, if you ever want to come over and do, like, a few gigs here on your own, hit us up. And so I did, you know, and ever since then, I've, you know, just put out different stuff, like, pretty much al almost always right around whenever I come back over there. Um, which is complete coincidence, but works out really well because then whenever I come over there, I'm like, hey, I've got this new material, you know, and I've got mm -hmm. new releases, and so it works out, and so I just kind of keep getting gigs over there, but, uh, and my, I don't know, my, and, and it works out because a lot of, you know, we asked about my music, a lot of it's influenced by um, kind of some of the Britpop bands that got started in like the 90s and all that, um, and even go mm -hmm. back to like the late 80s with, um, you know, Stone Roses and stuff like that, but uh, bands like Suede, Supergrass, The Verve, um, you know, they're all big influences on my writing. So, um, so that's, you know, there, there's definitely the, the, the comment I always get over here cause I play full time, uh, here in the States is just, you know, that, it, um, that my, that the music has like a, a British feel to it, which is, which is kind of cool because not as many people in this area do. So you know, being middle, mid America. So, mm -hmm. so that's, about yeah, the best definitely. Way and speaking of your writing, uh, speaking of your writing, you've been working on NEP, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've got a new one coming out uh, November 10th. Um, and I just dropped a single from that uh, in the middle of September. And, go check uh, it out. And, yeah, go check it out. So, so far, the singles are only on Apple Music and Amazon. But when the whole thing drops in November, it'll be everywhere. Um, and I think whenever I come over there in October, I think I'm going to be bringing some cop like actual physical copies with me. We'll see. But... Um, but streaming is definitely the best way to listen. And I've got stuff, several songs up on streaming right now already. Um, and it's, this one's a bit different because normally whenever I record, I still have a backing band that I hire and uh, like a drummer and a bass player and then I play all the other stuff. Um, but this time around, um, my distributor had said, hey, as a stopgap between your electric releases, why don't we do an acoustic EP? So it's, it, so it, like, it's, it's a lot more similar to what people see and hear whenever they come see me over here, you know, um, where it's just me and my acoustic guitar, the one right there behind me. Um, so yeah, I just went to the studio in August and laid down five tracks, five like new songs of mine, um, purely acoustic, and it turned out really well. So kind of happy about doing that. And might occasionally before, like I put out electric versions of these songs that might be like a new thing that I start doing. We'll see. Oh, that'll be fun. So yeah. is it going to be, is it going to be instead of Taylor's version, it's Chris's version? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, yeah, of course, you know, I, <sighs> I take so much, uh, just so much inspiration, you know, from, uh, from, from T-Swift, you know. As a, as from T-Swizzle. So. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> We're also recording this with like the whole Travis Kelsey thing happened this weekend. So like that. Oh. Too much, too much. That's all my for you page has been on TikTok. It's well, like, and that, that's the way Reddit has been too. Like for some reason for me, and I just keep like, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't even know what's going on, but like, I mm -hmm. still somehow know what exactly. Is going on in life, you know, like, I, I don't, I don't pay attention to her one bit, but I'm like, oh, I know she's seen Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Why yeah. I, I haven't, I, feel I like haven't listened. I haven't listened to her since I was like maybe 14 years old, but I still know the tea. I still know the goss. Oh my god, yeah. I blame internet culture. Oh goodness.
Um, making me dumber. <laughs> yeah. So you've experienced the music scene over here, and obviously, you know, Soy Boy over in Illinois. <laughs> Child of yes, the Corn. Soy Boy. I, over, over. I live not very far from soy fields, so I, I can't. Really, it's not like I can even like dispute it and be like, "Oh, you've got Illinois all wrong." That because nickname if you walked like a mile away. Yeah, that nickname was your fault because I called you a child of the corn, and you said, "There's more soy than corn," and I was like, "Soy boy, <laughs> you've, you've, there's the grave you just dug it for yourself. Good job." Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I do that. I do that often. So. <laughs> Okay, but so you've experienced the Liverpool music scene and the and the music scene uh, where where you are. Compare and contrast for us. Um, well, in Liverpool, it's just a lot more supportive, I guess. Even I mean, there's there's some really good support amongst the musicians here, but I think a lot of the time, um, it's a, for some reason it's a lot harder to go out here. And so even if musicians have a night off, they're not really going out to see other musicians that often and whenever they do it's a bit of a surprise whereas over there you know I'll go out to if I'm not playing and I go out to go see somebody else play it's full of all these other musicians mm -hmm. that I know because everybody's just constantly like wanting to be surrounded by music whereas here maybe it's um, I don't know if it's just like trying to people just try to find other forms of entertainment at home instead or something like that just because like you know here you, you literally have to drive everywhere you know it's, it's basically like that one of the biggest differences just between here in the UK in general is the reliance on driving. Um, mm -hmm. But I would just say in general, people, even non-musicians in Liverpool are more open to going out to listen to music and, you know, put their phones down for the night. Um, whereas mm -hmm. here, people, uh, it's almost like, it, it's almost like, you know, you know how like in, like everybody says that the biggest problem in the dating world these days is the illusion of choice. You know, like people are all constantly like breaking up and getting with new people because, uh, because there's all this choice out there now and you can see everybody all the time. Uh, it's kind of the same with entertainment here now. Like people are always like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that actually sounds good, but there's also always this or there's also always this or there's always this, you know, instead of just like going out to see music, people are looking for other forms of entertainment and it's just not, it's kind of viewed as a bit secondary and um, being a uh, full-time musician or even just part-time for some other people um, is almost seen as like the end of a joke, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. like um, there's, like I said, there's still some support because like, so don't get me completely wrong, there's like a really cool night um, like the, every third Wednesday where a bunch of musicians get together and put on this thing that we call Ben by Ben West, uh, named after a guy named Ben West here in town. And, um, and we all like play our own stuff around each other and, and for other people. And it's, and it's really cool. But like the fact that those nights are only relegated to about like once a month, you know, as opposed to, I can come over to Liverpool and get that just about anywhere. You can you know, go to, like you can come to Liverpool places. and go to like three open mics in the same night, every night of the week. Yeah. And Which yeah, it's and, and a little be, too much, but still, yeah. like yeah. yeah, there there are some newer places around that are trying to kind of push that a bit. Like there's a new place um, about thirty minutes away from me um, that just opened up called Little Nashville, and it's like becoming more of a listening room environment. And I got like a residency there, and so they're really trying to get the music culture going here. But like, it's kind of an uphill battle. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Um, yeah, there's yeah, so less demand I would say, for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Music in Liverpool is primary, and here it's secondary. So, mm -hmm. but but then but whenever you find people that do love and appreciate listening to music, whether it be live or recorded, like you have to like grab them and hold on to them, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't help that this is such a big place too, like such a big area in general and country, you know. So it's a lot harder to reach. Oh yeah, that's my favorite thing to do when I meet somebody new, and they're like, "Are oh, you from New York?" Usually by the third sentence, I'm like did you know that New York is the size of England and it's actually not that big of a state? Like it's my favorite, it's my party trick. Yeah. Like just to yeah, yeah, ter I, I, terrify the English. Uh, yeah. I do the same with Illinois uh, because Illinois is also like they're Illinois and New York are basically like super similar in size. And so, and like from bottom to top, I think it's like a seven hour drive, seven mm -hmm. or so hour drive. And so I tell people all the time, I mean like, yeah, just imagine you started out in like, you know, Brighton and wanted to drive up to, Newcastle you know it's kind of like that you know that's mm -hmm. that's just my state and there's 50 of them you know I mean they're different mm -hmm. sizes but Illinois is not even a big one no so. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, so I think with that, we'll head off to our couch concert, which will be on your couch to, to spice That's things right, up, yeah. change things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is another new one. It's going to be the next single due out in the summer. It's called Reckoning. Um, so I've been asking everybody two questions here. Okay. Um, the first is, what is a song from the Liverpool music scene that you hear and you wish you wrote? Ooh, okay. So let, let me just think on that real quick. And then, like, is this part of, this is part of the interview right now? Or are you going to ask me yeah. again, like, formally? Which one? No, no, no. This is part. This is part of the interview. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Don't pull the veil <laughs> back on that. We talk in between. We obviously <laughs> record things perfectly the first time through, Chris. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Everything's always perfect. Um, ah, oh, Jesus. It's probably gotta be. Uh, what's uh, what's what's the what's the official title of of Blair's song, Freddy? You know, is that? Right? <gasps> it's just called Freddy. <laughs> yeah. We just call yeah. Freddie. Okay, that's the, so that that's that's one option. But then um, I would also say um, "Talk It Out" by uh, John Witherspoon, like off of his <sighs> latest album. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love "Talk It Out." It's such a, so if if I could if I could tear them, I would say "Talk It Out" first, and then um, and then Freddie. So like if if I can have two answers, mm -hmm. would that be okay? Okay, yeah, because yeah. like yeah, that's just my favorite song off that album, and I don't think. 
so far it doesn't seem like it's getting... Uh, there, uh, uh, compared to some of the other songs on that album, it doesn't seem like it's getting the attention that it deserves. It's such a good track. Like the drums really make it to me too. Mm-hmm. But like, so it's, go it's so go good. stream "Talk It Out" by John Witherspoon. Now the yeah, second question: so uh, the entire Liverpool music scene goes head to head in the octagon, throwing bows. <laughs> Who's coming out? <laughs> oh man, uh, <laughs> I feel like. Mm, Johnny Oates is a very formidable guy uh, that I mentioned earlier. Here's he like Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. Let's see. You know, I th- I feel like sometimes when I look at Barry, I'm like, I think he could probably like take somebody if they really pushed him. You know, what Barry I mean? Jones. Like, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, Barry Jones. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I like he's he's so laid back and so calm about everything. But I think if you just got him wrong, he would just like. Absolutely, mm-hmm. like you know, kind yeah, of we're all lucky so. to be on his good side. Oh yeah, and no, I love Barry, and he, he's always super kind. But I think, <laughs> yeah, I feel like, uh, feel like if he really needed to to get it done, mm-hmm. then he could. He would, he would sit, he would kind of sit back and just, you know, like silently watch, and then he'd come in. And like, well, he's kind of like Guy in that if he just kind of like stretched his arm out and held somebody's head, they like wouldn't be able to reach Ooh, him. That's true. And and Guy Guy looks like he could take someone on too. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. Those are all tough choices. I I don't know. I would yeah. I would. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Barry. Just absolutely taking everyone. You know, like once once see once somebody pokes him enough. When somebody pokes the berry. <laughs> yeah, when somebody... Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm just loving all these puns. All right, well, Shannon. with that, um, <laughs> is there anything you want to plug before before we head off here? No, I just want to say that, like, I found it so funny, like, once... Um, I, I loved, like, once I saw that you were starting this uh, this whole series up. And, but I remember whenever I saw that it was called the Red Shutter Club, I was like, I slept like six feet from those red shutters. I know yeah, exactly man. what she's talking about. Yeah. So, so just, yeah, I just wanted to, just wanted to say that. I will be, I will be over there, um, but this episode may drop by then, but I'll be over there October 24th through November 2nd. But uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back a few months after that. So we, if, if it comes out later, we will yeah. not worry about it. Stay, that, stay I'll, up I'll to date on the gram. On the gram, yeah, yeah. Chris Chamness music, that's the easiest way to do it. I constantly yeah. post my schedule on there. So Constantly. Constantly. Every week. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> oh goodness. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being our guinea pig, Chris. Hey, yeah, no problem. Love it. All right, and thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs>